Hello, this is Spellbinders Report. I'm reporting on this, uh, We Are Change confronts Dick Cheney on 9-11 stand-down order. It's an Aaron Dykes, uh, article on Infowars.com, February 15, 2010. It states that, um, uh, the testimony of Norman Mineta before 9-11 Commission leaves compelling questions about former Vice President Dick Cheney's actions on the day of 9-11. Then Transportation Secretary Mineta witnessed Cheney refused to counterdict an apparent stand-down order as an aide warned of something incoming at the Pentagon. Cheney has given conflicting reports about what, ha what that time, what happened. Uh, he's entered the PEOC bunker. Mineta later confirmed his suppressed 9-11 commission testimony and refuted Cheney's account of arriving later. Uh, during the CPAC conference, WeAreChange.org confronted Cheney about these questions, which he refused to address. Hey, Mr. Cheney, what did you do in the underground bunker on 9-11? Dick Cheney, we know what you did on 9-11 with the stand-down order. Norman Mineta testified against you on the 9-11 Commission report. What happened on 9-11? As they screamed at him to get his attention on this. When he was being forced out, We Are Chains Org founder Luke Redkowski calmly asked security not to push him. Security backed off after asking him, are you being polite? Luke Rakowski and James Lane of We Are Chains confronted Dick Cheney in Washington, D.C. at CPAC on February 10th, 2011. Cheney dodged the uh, continuing question by exiting with his en entourage into an elevator as a woman started repeating, thank you Mr. Cheney for all you've done. Rukowski injected that he was a terrorist, certainly the use of admittedly elevated terror alerts throughout the Bush administration to stroke the fear card and score political dominion alone is reason to justify his label. The implications of what really happened on 9-11 and in relationship to Cheney's apparent stand-down order is even more compelling, notably a chain standard operating procedure for for the chain of command during the event of a hijacked aircraft was changed in June 2001, including subjecting NORAD's response to a DOD approved. And there's the document below. You didn't see all this, so I have links in the description. Uh, the former vice president's re entry into the public limelight after years of dealing with a uh, heart issues is what appears to be an attempt to rebrand the Bush administration in time to retain neocom power in the coming GOP presidential primary field where Tea Party politics and candidates like Ron Paul have obviously taken root with conservative voters in the years of the Obama administration. This confrontation occurred during the same CPAC convention where Ron Paul won the presidential straw poll and Dick Cheney, <laughs> Dick Cheney was heckled and called a warmonger. Uh, during a preparatory where Donald's Runfield was given the Defender of the Constitution Award. And that's a joke in itself. Defender of the Constitution. Yeah, Ron Rumsfeld. The man that brought you aspartame, the neurotoxic poison in your sweeteners. During that time that the airplane was coming into the Pentagon, there was a young man who would come in and say to the vice president, the plane's 50 miles out, the plane is 30 miles out, and when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, the young man also said that the vice president, do the order still stand? And the vice president turns and whips his neck around and said, of course the order still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? <laughs> Mm, and I will play both these videos. Here's the first video. Hey, Mr. Cheney. No, Mr. Cheney, what'd you do in the underground bunker on 9-11? Uh, 
Dick Cheney, we know what you did. Dick Cheney, don't put your hands on me. Get out of my way. Don't push I'll push you. Don't push me. Are you being blind? Mr. Dick Cheney, we know what you did on 9-11 when you did the stand-down order. The order of Mineta testified against you on the 9-11 commission report. Mr. Cheney, we know what happened on 9-11. Everybody out right now. Cheney, we know what you did on 9-11 with your stand-down order. Get away with it. Thank you, Mr. Cheney. Thank you, Mr. Cheney. Thank you for all you've done for our country. Thank you. You're a terrorist. You're a terrorist. Thank you. During the time that the airplane coming in to the Pentagon, uh, there was a young man who would come in and say to the vice president, the plane is 50 miles out, the plane is 30 miles out. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, uh, the young man also said to the vice president, do the order still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the order still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? A moment's contemplation reveals the magnitude of what we have just heard. Not only was Cheney in the Piak before Flight 77 hit, he told an obviously nervous aide that the orders still stood and then listened as the plane approached and then hit the Pentagon, the most heavily defended building in the world. Here's the video of the actual 9-11 uh, Commission asking Norman Mineta about the uh, incident with Cheney in the bunker. This is smoking gun damning information to Cheney. He is a war criminal along with the rest of them on 9-11 who, who well, I don't think Bush was really that involved. They sent him off to read a book about pet goat so he wouldn't be involved indirectly. But Cheney was running the government, I believe, the entire time that Bush was president. Here we go. Um, I wanted to focus just a moment on the uh, Presidential Emergency Operating Center. <clears throat> you were there uh, for a good part of the day. I think you were there with the Vice President. And uh, we had that order given, I think it was by the president, that uh, authorized uh, the shooting down of commercial aircraft that were suspected to be controlled by terrorists. Um, were you there when that order was given? No, I, I was not. I was made aware of it uh, during the time that the airplane coming in to the Pentagon, uh, there was a young man who would come in and say to the vice president, the, the plane is 50 miles out. The plane is 30 miles out. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, uh, the young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? Well, at the time I didn't know what all that meant. And um, the flight you're referring to is the, the one flight that came into the Pentagon. Oh, God. Yeah. And uh, so uh, I was not aware that that discussion had already taken place. And uh, but in listening to the conversation between the young man and and the vice president, uh, then uh, uh, at the time I didn't really recognize the significance of that. And then later I, I heard of the fact that the airplanes had been scrambled from Langley to come up to D.C. But those planes were still about 10 minutes away. And so then at the time we heard about the, the airplane that went into Pennsylvania, then I thought, oh my God, did we shoot it down? And then we had to 
with the vice president go through the Pentagon to check that out. Let me see if I understand that the plane that was headed toward the Pentagon and was uh, some miles away, there, there was an order to shoot that plane down. Well, I don't know that specifically, but I do, that, do know that the airplanes were scrambled from, from um, Langley uh, or, for, or from Norfolk, uh, the Norfolk area. And uh, so, uh, but I did not know about the order specifically other than listening to that other conversation. But there very clearly was an order to shoot commercial aircraft. Subsequently, out. I found that out. Um, with respect to Flight 93, uh, what type of information were you and the Vice President receiving about that flight? The only information we uh, had uh, at that point was when it um, was when it went into. Uh, uh, when, when it crashed. I see. You didn't know beforehand about that airplane? Did not. And so there was no specific order there to shoot that plane down? No, sir. Uh, but there were military planes in the air in position to shoot down commercial aircraft. That's right. The planes had been scrambled, I believe, from Otis uh, at that point. And there you have it. They believe that Cheney told him not to shoot down the jet that hit the Pentagon, if it even was a jet. Uh, the evidence shows engine parts that weren't of the plane that supposedly hit it. It was more like the engine parts of a cruise missile. But that's under debate of what that really was. Uh, but still, it's all said and done. I believe 9-11 was done so they could put us into a police state with the Patriot Act and now other acts. Now we got the TSA uh, molestering and, and fondling people and having a good time at it apparently and uh, you know or you get to go through the scatter x-ray machine and get yourself cancer in about 10 years you know part of the uh, reduction of population uh, control policies that they have going on with the UN. Yes, the UN is actually calling a lot of the shots for our government now because what we got in there are our turncoats on the Constitution of our government. They don't see the Constitution as anything but a piece of paper. Even Bush was known to have said during a conference meeting with AIDS that he said it's nothing but a piece of GD piece of paper and uh, and this is how they feel about our Constitution in other words they believe that they're all powerful and you put them in there to be your rulers and they're not in there to listen to you at all and that was proven with the Democrats during last year before the election at the town meetings I mean what other evidence do you really need that we're being controlled and manipulated by these people and not they're not listening to us anymore they're not listening to uh, anybody except themselves and the UN and and the banksters apparently because the banksters are the only one that made a profit this year and last year made a profit and are making a bigger profit this year and but yet everyone else is losing their jobs and factories are closing and all this stuff in America just you know, the stuff is obvious, and the mainstream media can't even cover it up anymore. It's just too obvious. They're just coming out and shutting down America. Pretty soon, we won't have an America, because if they blow the dollar out, I mean, I've just heard, read an article, actually, that uh, in Mexico, the Wally Worlds aren't taking uh, American dollars anymore at Walmarts. you got to have pesos to buy in the Walmarts in Mexico. That should be a... a, a dead giveaway that the money's ready to crash. Well, until next time, this is Spellbinder doing a news report on, well, on 9-11 and what really happened. Be good, or be good at it. Good day.